Hi everybody, it's Monica Heltz with your Daily Fishers Health Department update. And today I wanted to just uh, talk to you briefly about schools. Um, we know that some of our area schools have been in, uh, in person already, um, but for us, um, for HSE schools, the largest school district um, in Fishers, um, the kindergarten through fourth graders are gonna be heading back on Tuesday. So we're excited about that. We're excited that they're gonna do that in a hybrid model, um, meaning that that they'll only be in class half of the time. Um, that will help minimize the spread of the disease and make sure that our systems and processes that we have in place are, um, are fully operational and, and working well to keep everybody safe. Um, I also wanted to let you know that um, some things that you can do to prepare at home are um, to go through um, a planning for in-person classes checklist. The CDC has produced a nice one of those, and it goes through a lot of points that you might want to cover with your family and your and your um, students, your kids, um, to prepare them for the in-person um, learning model, because it's going to look a little bit different than it has in years past. So they you know, anything you can do to help them feel comfortable and prepare them for that idea is, is really going to help move us all forward. Um, we don't want the kids to have any extra anxiety about going back, um, and we want to make sure that they feel safe and supported and well prepared. Um, as far as um, our planning, we have been working really hard with HSC schools for some number of months. I um, have constant daily communication with the administration. I've had uh, meetings with um, the principals and the the nurses, I think we have a really good um, plan and structure in place that there are mitigation measures that are being taken by HSC schools to try to minimize the, the ability of the virus to spread in that environment. And they're pretty comprehensive all the way from uh, building level filters down to, you know, just sanitation, um, frequent sanitation and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, the response plans are also in place, and I think we have a good structure for that, um, that everyone has been trained on and is aware of um, on how to how to respond when somebody says they're symptomatic versus when um, they, ha they have been identified as, as being a positive case versus if they need to quarantine. So again, I think we've got a nice structure and plan in place, and we're ready to receive kids um, in conjunction with the schools. Um, and I also want you to know that we've been planning this whole thing from the standpoint of expecting cases. We know that we are going to have COVID cases in a school district with 22,000 people. It's not realistic to, to think that we're not. Um, but we do want to make sure that that structure and process is in place and is effective so that we can limit the spread because we are dealing with very large schools. Um, we're also expecting there to be quarantines as a result of those cases. So anytime somebody's been a close contact to a case, they're going to need to quarantine for a full two weeks. So a part of that structure and um, process that we've been building with the schools is to make sure that they're able to notify you guys and that we're able to notify you guys and manage um, the fact that we have kids out for two weeks. So that's part of that um, different um, model of, of um, learning with kids staying with with their teacher, whether they're virtual or not. Um, that's part of that flexibility that we need to have in order to make this happen. So the flexibility, I know, is something that we've all been really good at during this pandemic, and we're going to need to keep doing it. Um, so the good news is practice makes perfect, and we only get better at flexibility the more we exercise that. Um, but we do need your full support and willingness to kind of play by these rules that we've laid out so that we can make sure that the kids stay in class in person as long as possible and as much as possible with a minimum amount of disruption to all of us. So that means please don't send your kids to school if they're sick. Please don't send them to school if they've been in contact with somebody who could uh, who had COVID in the last two weeks. So we need everybody to be on board and to, and to support this as much as possible so that we can, again, um, keep doing this safely and keep our community healthy. If you're still not sure if um, going back to school is the right decision for you um, for in-person and whether you want to stick with a virtual model, um, I did want to let you know that there's a nice um, decision-making tool out there. Again, it's a CDC resource called the Back to School Decision-Making Tool. We'll try to get a copy of that on our website as well, but it, it goes through a lot of different points that you might want to consider when you're making um, those decisions for you and your family. I know some of you are very firm in your decisions on one way or another, but a lot of other people appear to be on the fence and want some help making those decisions. So those options are available to you as well. As a reminder, we do have testing available here in Fishers for all Fishers residents ages five and up. There's a nice video for the kids to watch if they are nervous about getting tested. Um, and that resource is available if you do get identified as a possible contact to COVID or if you're having symptoms um, or if you're just generally worried. So again, hope you guys had a safe weekend and um, take care. Bye.